Hello everyone, in this video, we're going to learn about Managed Identity in Azure Container Apps. Let's say you have this Azure Container App and you want to talk to another Azure Pass service like Azure Key Vault, Azure Storage or Azure SQL Databases. For doing that, you need to store some kind of a credential to authenticate your application to that Pass service. Storing this key or credential inside of your container app, it's not an easy thing to do. You have to create some kind of a environment variable each time to keep that credential. And managing those keys is not an easy problem that developers have to solve every day. And this is where managed identity is helpful. Instead of having this credential in each of your container apps, what you can do is you can create an Azure managed identity resource and you can attach that identity to your app and magically your application has the credentials to talk to that past service. Well, it's not really a magical thing. I have created a video on this topic previously. Please go ahead and watch it if you want to learn how this works underneath. To talk to this past service, your application uses some kind of a SDK, right? And by attaching this identity here to your container app, Azure will enable an HTTP endpoint. Now let me go into documentation and show you. As you can see here, your application will be able to invoke this endpoint, a local endpoint, and that will return the access token to talk to the past service that your application is accessing. And here, if you can see, when we do the HTTP request invocation, we are passing in the resource identifier. In this case, it is vault.azure.net and an API version as well. And this is how Azure knows what Pass service that we need to talk to. So basically, you don't need to know anything about how this internally works because if you're using an SDK, this is all managed for you. And that's why it is called managed identity. Before going forward, let me show this image as well. This is an image that I've taken from Microsoft documentation. When I initially learned managed identities, this helped me a lot. As you can see here, we have two types of resources. We have virtual machines, app services and function apps, these services are called source resources. And if you look at Key Vaults, Storage, SQL, Cosmos DB, these types of services, these are target resources. And if you look here, as a developer, I want to build an application using these sources that accesses these targets without having to manage any credentials. And this is the problem that managed identities solve. And now let me go into Azure portal and let's implement the really simple architecture that I've shown you earlier that has a container app and a key vault. And as you can see here, I have already created a key vault. And if I click on it, if we go into secrets, as you can see, I have one secret inside of the key vault. Now let me go back. I have created this key vault and this secret using this script and you will be able to find this script if you look in the description down below. Now let me go back into Azure portal. Since we have the key vault ready, it's time for us to create a sample application that accesses this key vault. For that, let me go into Visual Studio. As you can see here, I have created this empty ASP.NET application. And if I go into the csproj file, as you can see, I haven't installed any specific packages yet. And if I go into this page, accessing Azure key vault with .NET. I will link this page down below and this page contains the sample code for accessing Key Vault using a ASP.NET application. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to install these two packages into my ASP.NET application. All right, as you can see, I have just installed Azure Identity and Azure Security Secrets packages into my ASP.NET application. And now let me go into this page again and scroll down. And as you can see, this is how we can get, this is how we can read a secret that we have stored in Azure Key Vault. And if you look here, we are passing in default Azure credential object. This object knows how to get the access token invoking Azure managed identity services. Now let me add this code to application. All right, as you can see, I have done the necessary imports here and then I'm invoking the key vault and I'm passing in the key vault name as an environment variable for my container app. 
and then I'm reading my secret and after that if I go into the view of this page I'm displaying the secret value if I have that correctly loaded into my application otherwise I'm displaying the error that I'm returning here now we have written our application let's deploy this to docker hub let me do that now all right as you can see i have pushed the image to docker hub and now it is time for us to create our container app if i go into azure portal i can just create the container app environment and the container app let me search for container app all right i have selected the mi demo resource group for this let me name this container app managed identity sample and region i'm going to go with east us and container apps environment we need to create a container apps environment as well now here i can enter the name of the environment and that is cne mi demo and if i go into monitoring a log analytics workspace will be automatically created here and i don't want to integrate with any virtual networks and zone redundancy i'm going to keep it as disabled i'm going to go into app settings now this is where i can select the image that i've deployed to docker hub let me name this in my sample i'm gonna go with docker hub public repository and this is the name of the image with the tag this is what i pushed to docker hub you can get this if you go into your docker hub portal and os type is linux don't have any command overrides and this is the cpu and memory configuration this is okay i'm gonna enable an http ingress and I should be able to accept traffic from anywhere and port 80 is the port that my container is listening on. Let me go ahead and create this container app. Now, our application is in place. Let me go into the resource and with this URL here, we can access the application as well. And if we go into the Visual Studio and look at the code that we have deployed, I'm reading this environment variable called keyword name. Let me go into Azure portal and add that as well. I'm going into containers and as you can see, I don't have any environment variables. I'm going to edit this revision and let me click on it and scroll down. And here, as you can see, we can add the environment variables. And now let me click add and here I want to paste the keywords name and it's a manual entry, not a secret reference. And if I go into the demo vault, I'm going to copy the name of it. All right. And then I'm going to add it here. Let me save and create the new revision. I'm creating all these resources using Azure portal, but I have this script down below if you look at the description. And this script will create all the resources and all the configuration that I'm doing in the portal. And if you want to follow along, you can just run this script and this script will create all these configurations. If you can look here, I'm creating the environment variables and the identity resource and everything with this script. I'm using Azure portal to create all the resources so that I can explain it better in this video. Now let me go back, click refresh. As you can see, we have the key vault name and I'm going into the overview tab. And if I click on this link, as you can see, the managed identity fails. I'm seeing this error because if you look at the code, I've just added this try catch block and I'm displaying the error in the CS HTML page. All right, now let's try to figure out why this happens. If you look at this simple architecture that I've shown you earlier, we have created both of these resources and this container app is trying to access the key vault, but it doesn't have a credential. Let me go back into Azure portal and add the credential. Now, if I go into identity tab in my container app, this is where we can configure these managed identities as you can see we have two tabs we have system assigned and user assigned identities i'm going to first show you how system assigned identities work all we have to do is just enable this identity and what will happen here is that azure will add an identity reference that is registered in azure active directory to this container app and what this system assigned means is that if you delete this container app the identity resource identity registration in Azure Active Directory will be deleted as well. Now, let me turn this on, system assigned identity and save it, all right? If you want to learn more about system assigned and user assigned identities, I have created a separate video, please go ahead and watch that one. 
All right, I have enabled system assigned managed identity as you can see and I have received an object ID as well. Let me copy this object ID and let's try to reload the application. I'm not seeing any change and that is because even though I have added the credential, I haven't created the access policy in Azure Key Vault so that my application can access it. For that, I'm going into the Key Vault and I'm going into Access Policies and as you can see here, we have two permission models. This is the default permission model. I'm going to add an access policy and what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to read a secret that I have stored in this Azure Key Vault. The only operation that I want to do here is getting the secret and because of that I'm enabling get I'm setting the service principle and I'm going to search with that ID I have received and as you can see in my sample application is here let me add that service principle I'm going to create the access policy and then I'm going to save this all right now if I go into this page and click refresh as you can see the application can access the key vault and this is coming directly from a secret that I have stored in my key vault. Now that you saw how to work with system assigned identities, let me explain what user assigned identities are. As I said, if you delete this container app here, this identity object will be also deleted. And if you want to reuse this identity, let's say you have a lot of container apps or a lot of app services that needs to access a key vault, you can just create this identity object separate from this container app mainly for the purpose of reuse. In those cases you can go with user assigned identities. They are called user assigned identities because you are managing the actual identity object. Now let me show you how to create an identity object using Azure Portal. You don't have to use Azure Portal for doing that. If you look at this script that I have created here, you can create this identity object using the CLI as well. But let me show you how to do it on Azure Portal and if you go into this Managed Identities section of your Azure Portal, we can create this object and I'm going to click on Create. As you can see, we are creating a user signed Managed Identity. Let me change the subscription and the resource group. I'm going to go with East US Region. Let me call it Alright. I can just create this identity. I don't have to do any other customizations to it. Alright. Now our Managed Identity object on Azure is ready. It is time for me to assign this identity object to my application. Uh, let me explain to you one other interesting thing. Let me refresh it again. As you can see this application works and if I go into system assigned managed identity and I'm gonna turn this off and I'm gonna save it and disabling this should stop this content wrap from accessing the key vault. Alright, All right, as you can see the system assigned identity is gone but if I try to access it this still works and that is because we have the token cache in my container app and for now we have no way of revoking that cache and that is mentioned in the documentation as well and because of that what we can do is we'll have to recreate this container wrap to show you in this short demo let me do that now and come back to show you how user signed managed identities work all right I have recreated this container wrap and now if I go into this page here and since I have used the same container wrap environment, the URL will not be changed. Let me reload it. As you can see, we're getting the same error as before and let me go back into Azure Portal and User Signed Managed Identity section. Now let me add the User Signed Managed Identity. As you can see, we have created this app identity earlier and I'm going to select that app identity now. Alright, as you can see, unlike system assigned identity, we can add an existing identity to my container app. Now the difference here is that if you delete the container app now, this identity will not be deleted because this is separate from this container app. And now let me go into the Key Vault resource to enable access to the managed identity that we have created here. Now I'm in the Key Vault resource and if I go into Access Policies and I can click Add Access Policy here and I'm selecting the Get Secret Permission and I can select the principle here. Let me search for Identity. Alright, now let me add this Access Policy and I'm going to save it. Alright, now if I try to go into the application and let me refresh it, hmm. as you can see this still doesn't work. Is there something that we have missed here? 
One other configuration that you do to this to work is adding a environment variable to our container app. For that, let me go into the container app and then I'm going into containers. As you can see, I already have this environment variable. I'm going to add another environment variable that contains the client ID of the identity, the separate identity, this one here that we have created. And let me scroll down. And if you look at this script that I prepared for this, I'm adding the same thing here as well. I'm adding this environment variable as your client ID. And this is the client ID that I'm taking from this identity that I'm creating here. Let me copy this Azure client ID and then I'm going to add a new environment variable and it is a manual entry and then I'm going to go into this app identity and then I'm going to copy the client ID and then I'm going to add that as well. You can specify this in the code as well and this is another way of doing it pointing the managed identity application that it should use. As you can see we have created our revision and if I try to refresh it, we can see the Azure client ID and the keyword name inside of this environment variable section. And now if I go into the application and then I'm going to reload this page. As you can see, the application works now. This is what I wanted to explain in this video, how you can use managed identities to access other Azure platform as a service services without having to store the credentials inside of your application. And in addition to this, there are two things that I want to mention here. And those are when you create a managed identity, a new revision will not be created. This does not affect the revision scope of your application. And the next thing is when you create, for example, scale rules, the container app should be able to interact with other Azure resources. Now, if you look at my previous video, in that video, I'm showing you how you can use an Azure storage queue to scale out your containers. And that scale out happens based on the number of messages that you have inside of your message queue. And for getting the number of messages that you have in the message queue, the container apps environment has to access that service, for example, Azure storage. And you can't use managed identities to access those resources you will have to keep the connection string as a secret reference in this section for now. And this is the end of this video. If you have any comments, questions or video suggestions, please let me know down below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you learned something new today. I will see you with another video like this soon and thanks for watching.